we gather here in the presence of the Holy Spirit and pray blessings on us as we all look forward to the coming week. Let me share with you a couple of announcements as we get started. The Envision community will meet online and in person a little uh, tonight at 6 p.m. The Disciples Women will meet online Tuesday evening at 7. Faith and Food will meet online Wednesday uh, and will begin at 7 p.m. And you can find the links to join these groups uh, online uh, at fccdenton.org. Uh, Again, we appreciate you being here. Let us gather and let us worship. The Lord be with you. Let us sing together. Please join me in prayer. Abba, Father, we come to you grateful for this opportunity to worship you and your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers this morning, Lord, as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I am inviting it's time for the children's message, so circle on around the computer so you can see everything. This last Tuesday, we celebrated the very first day of fall. During the fall season, our thoughts turn to gathering in the harvest. We bring in the things that we have been gathering and growing throughout the summer. Farmers harvest all of their crops, the fruits and vegetables that they worked so hard on. Maybe without even realizing it, we have been growing our fruit the fruits of the spirit, that is. So let's start with the big one, which is love. And y'all can just silently say a prayer that Charlotte doesn't have fruit basket turnover up here. This is love. This is the pumpkin. It's big. If you were able to share your love of others with the cards you made for church members, There was some joy, joy, it's an apple. Did you experience some joy and enjoy the things that showed up in your mailbox or on your porches this summer? We learned about kindness. Yes, tomato is a fruit. Remember, Anthony, we had that conversation. That is a tomato. Okay. We learned about kindness as we prayed for others, even those we hadn't met yet. There was a sweet... 
sprinkle of goodness in those cute fall door hangers you made for others. Let's see here. Oh, strawberry. That'd be good. You were able to show your faithfulness by attending church online all summer long, even though you weren't able to be here in person. Your gentleness came in when you treated others the way you wanted to be treated. Let's see here. Gentleness. What about a peach? Let's see if we can get that peach. Oh, look, that peach is going to sit up there. What about self-control? Were you able to share those chocolate chip cookies you got or those goodies in your snack basket? Our basket, oh, self-control. We'll say that's a, we'll say it's a plum. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I'm trying to do this without knocking everything over. Okay. And that's all it is. Our basket's getting pretty full. But there's always room for God's peace. And we sure need that these days. So we're going to add a lot of that. Got my kids there. Mm -hmm. It's blueberries we're going to sprinkle in there. Got a lot to add. Got a healthy sprinkling of that. Looky here. Our basket is overflowing with fruits of the Spirit. Might make a pretty good fruit salad, too. You kids have had a good harvest this summer. We have a lot to be thankful for. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the bountiful harvest and fruits of the Spirit. Our children are learning about the ways they can show your love to others, and for that we are grateful. This new season gives all of us more opportunities to be fruitful in faith. Be with us and help us to be the best kids we can be. Amen. Gracious God, we come together in spirit and in truth to give you our sincere thanks. You have given us so much that brings joy to our hearts. In this bountiful fall season, may we let go of the things that separate us from you. The unwillingness to forgive, the ignorance of others' needs, the hate that divides us, and the apathy we sometimes show. We change to blow these things away. In their place, give us, heart, give us hearts for service, minds open to reconciliation with our brothers and sisters, and a willingness to be your face on this earth. Our world needs the refreshing wind of your spirit to cool the heat of hate and divisiveness in these times. There are so many standing in the need of your love, grace, 
give them your healing arm and abundant mercy. Illness and death touch our lives during this pandemic. Our prayers of hope go up to you now. In these dark days, we may feel as if it's always that horrendous Friday, but the glorious Sunday morning is coming. We are an Easter people, no matter the season. We are blessed to live on this side of the cross. There is no greater joy than loving a living, risen Savior. For that and all of the many blessings you shower on us, we give you our eternal thanks. Amen. We come and gather here this day as we close up uh, our series on the foundation and the cornerstones upon which we can build a mission oriented church. We come and we celebrate today in a different way than just sermon or just song, but we worship and seek inspiration from word and song. So today we celebrate. Our sermon brings to an end and brings us to a new beginning. This starts our new series on focusing on the mission of the beloved community. Let us begin. We, as a people of faith, hold up the Bible, Old and New Testaments, and proclaim this is our holy scripture, our foundation. As a Christian people, we see the whole of the Bible as foundation, but also understand when Jesus crosses over the threshold of history, he fulfills the very essence of the Old Testament, which was his scripture. He knows and he believes that we, humankind, were created in God's image. Jesus believes we were created by a God of love. And through Jesus' teaching and life, he calls us to be a part of a new kingdom built upon that love, a different kind of kingdom, a kingdom that loves with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, a kingdom lived out in that same grace and mercy and forgiveness that Jesus lived. So come on, you are invited to get on board. People get ready, there's a train a coming. Don't need no baggage, you just get on board. All you need is faith, hear the trump is humming. You don't need no ticket, you just thank the Lord. People get ready, there's a train to Jordan, picking up passengers from coast to coast. Faith is the key, open the doors and board them. There's hope for all among those love the most. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory, don't care nothing but the righteous and the holy. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train don't carry no gamblers, this train. 
this train don't carry no gamblers this train this train don't carry no gamblers fly your please no big right gamblers this train is bound for glory this train this train don't carry no liars this train this train don't carry no liars this train this train don't carry no liars she streamlined on the midnight flyer this train don't carry no liars this train this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory don't carry nothing but the righteous and the holy this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train Thomas Merton wrote, So much depends on our idea of God, yet no idea of God, however pure and perfect, is adequate to express God as God really is. Our, our idea of God tells us more about ourselves than about God. Jesus teaches us from the first family of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, to Moses and those he led out of bondage and slavery, to their crafting of a golden calf made from that which they brought with them from their enslaved lives through all the wars and pestilence and violence of the Old Testament until today. We as humankind have struggled with the concept we created in God's image, that we are created in God's image. Oh, we think we understand, but judging from our lifestyles, sometimes I wonder. Did you listen to those beautiful songs just sung? Popular songs that have been sung for a long time, both written in times of social and cultural turbulence. Curtis Mayfield wrote about there is a train a-coming in the 1960s. This train is bound for glories. The original songwriter was unknown, but was popularized initially by Sister Rosetta Thorpe in the late 20s and early 1930s. In hard times, we seek hope. It is in hard times we seek pathways to take us beyond our struggles. Curtis writes and sings about an invitation to get on a train out of these struggles. No need for baggage. Just get on board. It's free. We are picking up everyone, he sings. He sings us toward a pathway of hope. Curtis sings about those who are loved most, yet who defines who is loved most? And in the folk song, it leaves no doubt this train is bound for glory, and that is a destination that most Christians understand. Yet the lyrics also include, don't carry nothing but the righteous and the holy. Don't carry no gamblers or liars. My question is, who gets to define the righteous and the holy? And while many of us do not gamble, I'm not sure how many of us can proclaim that we never lie. It is in those questions that we begin to understand whether we truly believe and model that we are created in God's image or that we have chosen a lifestyle that allows us to live the life of our desires by creating a God in our image, the image we imagine or want our God to be. Have you ever caught a glimpse of the authentic you, the you God created in God's image. To be authentic to the person of your soul, to reflect that image in what we do and how we live, how we relate to the people of this world daily, that is to model Jesus' teaching in life. So let me invite you to listen to this poem by a 13-year-old American child. 
my face as foreign to me as a mask allows people to believe they know me. 13-year-old American child. Headlines would read if I was no newsworthy, but I that's, that, that's just the top of the iceberg me. I could spend hours searching in the mirror for clues to my true my true identity if some would just stop pounding on the bathroom door. You can't see what the mirror doesn't show. For instance, that after I close my book and turn off my lamp, I say to the dark, give me a message I can give to the world. Afraid there's a poet behind my face. I beg until I've cried myself to sleep. A poem, a prayer. Give me a message. Give me a message. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich. In love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then
worship your holy name. We create a God that provides a smorgasbord, a buffet from which to pick and choose. This poet is a reader of history, an observer of the world, a poet of life. This poet echoes God with us. The poet echoes the scripture God with us shares so that we would know the foundation upon which to build and live our lives. In a poem making history, the poet writes, somebody took a picture of a class standing in line to get polio shots and published it in the weekly reader. We stood like that today, and it did hurt. Ms. Libel said we were making history. But all I did was squinch up my eyes and wince. Making history takes more than standing in line, believing little white lies about pain. Mama says first Negroes are history, first Negro telephone operator, first Negro opera star at the Met, first Negro pilots, first Supreme Court judge. That lady in Montgomery just became a first by scrunching up her eyes and sitting there. And the poet writes about the Irish famine, famine refugees who were met with vehement racism from the native-born American whites when they arrived in America. The poet writes, more Irish seem to arrive every day like rats fleeing a ship that's going down. Their women troll our streets for men at night. Their children run wild all day in shanty town. They come in coffin ships with little more than faith and hunger. Ignorant, unskilled, they seemed hell-bent on making themselves less like prodigal sons content to live in swill. People who have nothing will rob the poor to feed their children. Now I lock the house and I clutch my purse as fearful as the rich. They're starved of hope, desperate and unwashed. But I do like that flock of Irish nuns who swoop like crows catching truants by the ear and marching them to school. They wake the tarts to steer them toward responsible careers. They are taking thousands of white fugitive slaves who, can imagine, who can't imagine better lives beyond full stomachs, works, and a hovel called home and teaching them to dream of a free dawn. And she writes of a childhood in a poem entitled Moon Lily. When we play horses at recess, my name is Moon Lily, and I'm a yearling mare. We gallop circles around the playground, playground, winning and neighing and shaking our manes. We scrape the ground with scuffed saddled Oxford, thunder around the little kids on the swings and seesaws and around the boys' ball games. We're sorrel and chestnut, buckskin, pinto, gray, a herd in pastel dresses and white socks. We're self-named, untamed, untouched, unridden. Our plans know no fences. We can smell spring. And then the bell produces a metamorphosis. Still hot and flushed, we file back to our desk, one bay in a room of Palomino. The poet reminds us that God created us in God's image. Every one of us, every one of us. The poet reminds us Jesus taught us five fishes and two loaves were enough if we care about each other. The poet reminds us Jesus spent an act time acting justly, loving tenderly, and walking humbling with his creator God. 
We know Jesus spent a lifetime doing ministry in the midst of the poor and the marginalized and the oppressed, the hungry and the thirsty, the widowed and the young, all those different than us, yet the same as us, each of us, all of us, created in God's image. We are called to be willing and to trust. I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord until I die. treat everybody right I'm gonna treat everybody right I'm gonna treat everybody right until I die I'm gonna treat everybody right I'm gonna treat everybody right I'm gonna treat everybody right until I die I'm gonna stay on the high road I'm gonna stay on the high road. I'm gonna stay on the high road until I die. I'm gonna stay on the high road. I'm gonna stay on the high road. I'm gonna stay on the high road until I die. I'm gonna watch, listen, and pray. I'm gonna watch, listen, and pray. I'm going to watch, listen, and pray until I die. I'm going to watch, listen, and pray. I'm going to watch, listen, and pray. I'm going to watch, listen, and pray until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I Until I, until I die. The words of this poet reminds us we are called not to step on those we believe beneath us, to keep them down to keep them down with our privilege to our advantage and their oppression. But rather we are reminded ones created in God's image will indeed bend down, extending a helping hand that lifts them up, embracing them with open arms of love and care, welcome them as accepted members of the community, living with gratitude and always seeking peace with justice for all. And we cry out, what we pray, what shall we do? And we cry out, we pray, how shall we live? If, you have, if you've gotten anything at all out of following Jesus, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, yourself and the world a favor. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. 
forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. And we cry out. We pray, show us the way. I gladly walk across the desert with no shoes upon my feet to share with you the last bite of bread I had to eat. I would swim out to save you in your sea of broken dreams. When all your hopes are sinking, let me show you what love means. Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time? I would whisper love so loudly every heart could understand. Love and only love can join the tribes of humankind. I would give my heart's desire so that you might see. The first step is to realize and all begins with you and me. Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time? What blindfolds us from the empathy and the love that builds bridges? With what eyes do we see fear? Is there a lens that we can look through to show us a way to be kindness in this world? So many hurts that happen every day. So many heartaches that pierce the soul. So much pain that won't ever go away. How do we make it better? How do we make it through? What can we do when there's nothing we can do? We 
can be kind. We can take care of each other. We can remember that all deep inside we all need the same thing. And maybe we'll find if we are there for each other that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. Nobody really wants to fight. Nobody really wants to go to war. If everyone wants to make things right, what are we always fighting for? Does nobody want to see it? Does nobody understand? The power to heal is right here in our hands. We can be kind. We can take care of each other. We can remember that deep down inside we all need the same things and maybe we'll find if we are there for each other that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring and it's not enough to talk about it it's not enough to sing a song we must walk the walk about it. You and I, do or die, we've got to try to get along. We can be kind. We can take care of each other. We can remember that deep down inside we all need the same thing. the power to heal right here in our hands. Right here in our hands. From Jesus' scripture, the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them as you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. And from the New Testament found in all of Mark and Matthew, Mark, and Luke, building on those ancient words of his scripture, Jesus came not to change but to fulfill, and he shared. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus being the fulfillment, of those ancient words replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. 
This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two, com- these two commandments. And today, we've had meaningful music sung and played beautifully. We have heard the calling of our holy scriptures. And powerful words of poetry have been shared. So what if I told you This poet was an Irish man writing of his experiences. Or what if I told you the poet was a black professor or a priest confessor or the child of a Palestinian father and a white mother or the child of a Vietnamese mother and American soldier father? What if I told you this poet was a survivor of the Holocaust or Hiroshima, or Pearl Harbor, would it make a difference? Would it make a difference? Be careful now how you answer, because your answer may indeed reveal whether your lifestyle reflects an understanding that you are created and living in God's image, or if you have chosen to create a God in the image, that allows you to live the life as you wish. A poem from a poet who not only teaches at a university, but teaches poetry to the students and the soldiers at West Point. It's entitled, 13-Year-Old American Negro Girl. My face, as foreign to me as a mask, allows people to believe they know me. Thirteen-year-old headlines would read if I was newsworthy, but that's just the top of the iceberg me. I can spend hours searching the mirror for clues to my true identity, if someone just wouldn't just didn't pound on the bathroom door. You can't see what the mirror doesn't show you. For instance, that after I close my book and turn off my lamp, I say to the dark, give me a message I can give to the world. Afraid there's a poet behind my face. I beg until I've cried myself to sleep. And that young girl, now in her 70s, a full-grown, bright, intelligent, poetic woman is able to say, I found my authentic self. I prayed God to give me a message. It was her prayer, and she received. So my friends, let us pray this week. For our, for our authentic selves. Let us pray, give us a mission. Let us pray, give us a message that this world through our lives and the life of this church would indeed know the beloved community. And all God's people gathered and all God's people had an opportunity to hear And all God's people said, Amen.
In this church, we come to this table each time that we gather. We come and we look at this table, and this one is of this size. But we believe deep in our hearts. We believe as a part of who we are that this table can be long enough and wide enough, and we can add as many leaves to it as we need for all, for all to come and gather around. And so we invite you online to join with us, to find a bit of bread and a a swallow of, of something to drink and join us as we come to celebrate the fact that we know Jesus has come into this world. He has suffered as we have suffered and he has given the promise of grace and forgiveness to all of us. Join us this day as we break this bread and drink this wine. And it was at that meal that Jesus took up bread of the day and he broke it and he blessed it and he gave it to them saying, Take and eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And he took up wine of the day, and after pouring it out and blessing it, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of you from this, for this is the cup of grace, of saving grace for you and this world. Let us pray. Father, we come to you in a humble appreciation, for this bread will represent your son's ultimate sacrifice for our salvation. Help us, God, that we might truly understand the full meaning and impact of our Lord Jesus' sacrifice for us. Bless this bread that it might strengthen us, Lord God, that we might go forth each day and live our lives as you intend us to, as a beacon of Christ's love and forgiveness in our troubled world. Likewise, Lord, we are profoundly grateful for this cup and what it represents to all Christians, the blood of your precious Son spilt for us, in order that we might have eternal life. Father, walk with each of us each day that we might live as Jesus Christ lived, as a servant of God and man, that we might love one another as you love us, that others might see you in us, and that we may live as you commanded us to live all the days of our lives. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in the taking of this bread and the drinking of this wine. I invite each of you to remember the work of God's church in your offering this morning. And then we might live up to the calling God has for His church in our community. You may make your contribution by visiting www.fccdenton.org backslash giving by setting up a sustaining gift through your bank's bill pay feature by mailing a church 
check to the church office or by dropping a check by the office during our regular working hours. Please call and let Sarah know you are coming. Let us rejoice in what God has blessed us with and be generous in sharing those blessings with others. Today is the first Sunday of our Reconciliation Special Offering. I'd like to share a verse that I'm sure you're all familiar with, John 13, 34. Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Note that this was given by, given by Jesus Christ as a command. He didn't ask. It was a command. This sentence, the first sentence, is love one another, period. It does not get much more straightforward than that. The second sentence is, I have loved you, so you must love one another. Again, he used must. He, not, he didn't say love just the folks you like, just the folks that look like you. He said love one another. That is simple as Jesus could possibly make it. Love one another. He makes no distinction between wealthy or poor. No distinction between color, creed, or nationality. No distinctions at all. Love one another. And I want to show, share a quote of Dr. Martin Luther King's. He used this during his Nobel Prize acceptance speech in Oslo, Norway. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. This is why right, temporarily defeated, is stronger than evil triumphant. We as Christian in God's church must lead with love, just as we're commanded to. The fight against oppression and racism in any form and every form. Show your love for all God's children. Please write reconciliation on the note line of your offering check. Thank you and may God bless you this coming week. We come to the end of our service today and we sincerely hope and pray that you found words that would make a difference in your life. And before we leave, I have just a short story I need to tell you. This group comes together every Sunday morning, right Cassandra? To preach before we start, to practice what we preach, to practice what we're going to sing. Cassandra was warming up this morning, singing songs with great vigor, and I was so moved, I started singing with her, right next to Mark. And when they finished that song, Mark was sure to say to me, during the service, when she's singing, you're not. <laughs> Cassandra, we thank you. Thank you. Mark, we thank you as always. Charlotte and to the rest of the staff, we thank you all to the tech group that keep us up and running and jump up and down and start pointing to their hips when the senior minister who tells everybody, do not forget 
to turn on your mic does that at the beginning. Kevin, we thank you for being here and for sharing those words of reconciliation. And so we come to the time when we will leave this place and we go out into this world. And in the days to come, let us remember that when we touch a person's shoulder, if we share a word of love, if we, if we, if we model for them care and concern, it may be the only time this week that the love of God touches their lives. Go in peace, my friends. Blessings in the week to come. Amen. Yeah,